Hello there. Welcome to EU Property Solutions here on the uh, Bank Holiday Monday, the 28th of August. And in this webinar today, we're discussing foreign property issues that are still uh, apparent in Spain. Uh, the dynamic of what we do at EU Property Solutions is changing all, all the time in Spain. Nothing's rapid, I'm sure you know that. Uh, but we want to give you a bit of an update in this webinar in terms of what we know what's going on in the market, particularly the holiday home market and those that have been stuck with uh, troublesome properties. So we'll get, get going straight away. And just what I want to do first is bring a, a quick introduction in terms of what we're looking at here. So we're covering uh, the principal subject that we deal in, which is negative equity in Spain, which still is, is, is rampant. We're going to give you a quick update on our perception of the market as it is, plus uh, the banks. It gives you a bit of an insight, hopefully, into how they're operating, which, again, is evolving all the time, even though, again, I repeat myself very slowly. I'd like to refer and recommend our YouTube channel, which has lots of informative videos. Uh, we, we cover a number. Spain is one of our principal markets we work in, but we also work in Cyprus and gen, genuinely uh, worldwide. So there's, there's quite a bit of information on there, and that's free to use. Uh, and that's what we want to do, share our knowledge and information as it arises, and thus this um, webinar today. It's a very difficult subject for some people to get their head around because principally we find most clients made one flawed decision when they bought a property that just basically doesn't work as an investment in any form. Uh, and it's trying to help people to get their heads around that there is an exit here. Now, that's very important to get across. Before we start here, we've literally got a case here that the team in Leeds settled. I'm based in sunny Belfast today, but uh, our team in Leeds that see these things through um, they just secure this brilliant deal for a client. And I'm going to talk you through the, the principal part, so it going to give you a bit of a flavour of what we do. So we had a gentleman in, uh, in Leicester there who back in 2007 bought a property in Dequesa Village. Uh, there's quite a few developments that have a bit of a, a bit of notoriety in Dequesa Village as one, where essentially the values were pumped, the whole, the whole thing was, 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 was corrupt, but clients got caught in it. And it, it to, the only way is to sort these things out is to take the problem head on, thus our existence. So we were appointed only in March 23, and we settled it within five to six months. So we had this apartment, and we had uh, an outstanding balance with BBVA, uh, quite an aggressive bank, not too customer-facing. Some of the banks are a bit more civil, but they're, they're not the best. But anyway, we, we and our legal team uh, attacked the problem. He was uh, in arrears in terms of the community fees. Obviously, it was a property that was going slightly into, uh, into uh, dis dis disarray. And uh, he, he wasn't interested. I'm not saying this was right, not paying a community fees by any stretch. I know that that does have an effect on the rest of the residents in, in these uh, communities. He also had IBI debt of over 3,000. And being a dentist, pretty wealthy chap, Good, good pensions, uh, nice house, etc. And that was at risk in the UK. And BBVA were putting the pressure on, as were the community and the local uh, the local council in respect to the EV taxes. Long story short, we agreed that the property should be sold at the market value, which was about 96500 And BBVA were then going to take on the sales costs, whatever the agent was paid, etc., plus the legal costs. They also had to secure clean title and the only way to do that was also to pay the community fees and the IBI taxes. With everything that was going on in this case, we saved our client over 60,000. If they'd sold the property and faced the value, there would have been all sorts of other costs, obviously estate agents costs, non-residents taxes, and all the other costs that would have had to been sorted out. So the total savings for our client after costs was 60,000 pounds. And that's the sort of work that we do. We uh, perversely enjoy it, but we like getting people from a bad situation to a better place. And that's basically always our mantra in terms of what we do. So quickly on to Spanish banks uh, and loan sales. I, I've gone on about loan sales for a little while now, and I just want to give you uh, a, a, a backdrop, if you like, as to why it's very important that you should have this knowledge. Our approach is to keep up to speed on everything that is going on in terms of Spanish banks that have any effect on any property, especially holiday homes. 
uh, as an example at the bottom there about Exacta, which I uh, which I read the other week in the Financial Times. It gives us an insight as to what's going on and how they're operating because they're not going to open up, so we have to go and find out. So there's that and our brilliant legal team in Spain, which are cherry picked. Took a lot of finding a good solicitor in Spain. You may have well have experienced that dodgy notaries, etc. Um, I don't really care about solicitors as a race, but our guy is a, uh, and his team are very, very good. Uh, they understand us, we understand them, and it's a, it's, a, it's a brilliant relationship. That relationship, in turn, uh, ensures we do get the very best deal for clients. Um, so banks have been going through a, a process since 2008 where they've consolidated. And by that, um, uh, the figures, the figures bear, bear uh, reality to that, in that, there were 55 banks and cajas in Spain pre-2008. Now, pre-2008, obviously, the, the lending was crazy and uh, it, it brought many banks down. In, in the in, Here in the UK, obviously, uh, RBS went close to, to the wire, but that was about it. So the banks were, were controlled by the Central Bank of Spain. Uh, they were told and backed by EU money to basically mop up the cajas and the weak banks and suddenly the high streets changed completely in Spain, as it has done in England. Now there are 10 banks left. So they bought in all these, all, all sorts of books and loans and everything else. And that's what they call them, loan books. Now, the CEO of Kaiser Bank still sees more uh, mergers coming down the tracks. Okay, And we have to keep an eye on this because it changes the dynamic. Because if we're getting on with one bank or we can at least you know talk open and honestly with them, uh, it works really well. If that bank or Caja is taken over by another bank, then the relationship changes, uh, the dynamic changes, their criteria and everything. So we have to keep up to speed with that. And it, it's very, very quick how quickly, uh, very qu too many quickly is there, in that their decision process and their protocols change massively like that. Our legal team in Spain, and I say us as well, keep our ear to the ground in terms of these changes so that we can give advice on a live basis. If something changes when a client comes on, we do that as well. And all this job is doing is basically helping the uh, banks, you know, say, consolidate in number, but also strengthen again after the terrible uh, crash of 2008. Um, and this in turn then brings us to loan sales. And what, what loan sales are, if they have what they call non-performing loans, they want to, the, and the central bank of Spain requires them to get rid of them, basically, because the balance sheet has to have certain measures, ratios, criteria, etc., that deems them to be a stable bank that the central bank of Spain want. Now, by non-performing loan, that doesn't just mean non-payment. That can be a, non, a negative equity property. That could be a, a pro, uh, it could just be uh, categorized as being a non-performing loan for whatever reason. Okay, that gets sold to uh, some some people call them vulture funds. You may have heard of them, uh, and basically they're they're a worldwide phenomenon. Phenomenon. We deal with them here in uh, in the UK because they go around buying up a lot of consumer debt and uh, things like that. So that that's a lot of that, that that's not not unknown to us, but. For uh, clients, it's quite disturbing to get a letter from somebody they don't know from Adam, just write them and say, right, we own your mortgage, okay? Uh, hang on a minute, I was with Sabadell, okay? where well, you're not now, you are with us, okay? That could be Pepper, that could be Exacta, that could be any any number of um, any number of these vulture funds are set up to, to, to basically mop up this ugly debt, okay? Now, these loan purchases aren't regulated, okay? So they make all the nice noises about, yep, uh, we're okay, it's everything's fine, right? But they want their money. They've paid a discount, sometimes quite heavy, on the uh, what was the book value of the debt. And I'll give you a bit more example in a minute on this exact case, okay? And if you are in arrears, they're very aggressive, okay? When I say aggressive, they're aggressive in their tone, but in terms of what we do at EU Property Solutions, we manage their expectations. And by that, I mean, say, right, calm down, okay? You want your money, uh, and we, we, we basically, I have a phrase here I use quite regularly, basically we have a punch up with them, and we make sure that we get the best deal from the client for the client from that situation. Every client's perspective, every client's case is completely different. 
and it's we want to in this web and i'll give you we don't, we don't want to scare you but we want because we want to give you the perspective rightly the loan purchasers a fairly simple piece they bought it for diddly squat and they want diddly squat times two or whatever the multiple is so they're quite easy to manage there in that thing and our guys in terms of the um solicitors and natalie and jim especially in uh leads there understand this they deal with these deal with these regularly and they they know the mentality of the people they know and they're very often their barks worth in their bite some aren't some of some are quite aggressive and nasty but we can manage all these out and we do it specifically to your needs and your situation so an example i'd say i've alluded to a couple of times and this was reported in the financial times a couple of saturdays ago and Exacta are in the throes of buying uh, part of Sabadell's MPL book, their non-performing loan book. And the uh, figure that was sounded like a little bit of a guesstimate on the part of the FT was they paid 150 million for it. Okay. Now this will include everything. This will include a lot of old rubbish debt in Spain, credit cards that haven't been paid for five years, uh, defaulted mortgage by Spanish residents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. An exacta and all these vulture funds are very strong in terms of systems and how they go about this work. Now they are also very uh, they're well versed in cross jurisdictional matters, and by that I mean. They have no qualms in picking up a Spanish debt and looking for the English, Irish, Scottish, Welsh person who may um, owe them money now that they own that book. And whereas banks traditionally, no matter where they are in the world, even here in Northern Ireland, uh, banks in the south are very poor chasing in the north. OK, and the same from England to here in, in Belfast now. But excuse me, loan purchasers, vulture funds aren't. They see no boundaries and we, we have tactics there to ensure that the debt stays in Spain and the issue stays in Spain. If it doesn't and it comes to England, it's not too late. We can still do things. But what the key here, as is in life and problems generally and something I always adopt, if there's a problem, let's deal with it now. So the next thing we're going to talk about is Spain and the holiday home market. Now, we, we stick particularly to this sector of um, the property market in Spain, uh, and, but we keep ourselves up to speed on whatever's going on. And there's a very good um, journal that Mark Stucklin does, uh, writes every week about, and it's called Spanish Property Insight. Okay, So he's quite a good source if ever you want to find out what's going on. But he, he looks at the whole market, the Barcelona market, the tourist market, uh, the uh, Airbnb market, daddy, daddy, da, right? we stick purely to the holiday home market because we know there are any number of issues still there an estimate recently that we got that there's still about thirty thousand properties in negative equity still in spain alone we deal in cyprus uh, we believe that they're in the region of seven and a half thousand to ten thousand uh, and unfortunately there are have not been over time on certain developments no material uh, rise in prices over many years uh i'll give you we're going to give you an example in a minute but i'll give you one of one i recently visited when we were working in spain in um may there and a guy back in the day missold on every front when i say missold that's in inverted commas don't start going off to the fca because they don't entertain the stuff um and he paid two hundred fifty thousand pound euro sorry for a unit uh which ultimately sold for sixty thousand um and even if that goes up 50, if that went up 100%, it only goes to 120,000 euro. So it's unfortunately these developments, and we're not judging people in anything if you bought there. This is purely about the money. No, in no way judgmental about if you made a mistake and bought in a, uh, a poor development. That's, that, that's life. Things go on. But these price rises are minute. Uh, and they, they just haven't come back. So that's why we would be able to say those sort of figures, the, the problems uh, shows that the problem still exists. We, if you uh, listen to the mainstream media, obviously there's huge, and there are economic pressures, but nowhere near as bad as the uh, mainstream media says. But that backdrop does not help in terms of confidence. And especially again, in the holiday home market, I, I'm of a certain age, as you can tell by the receding hairline and the grey thatch, and I know that the demographic has changed massively 
in terms of 2008 through to today's uh, demographic, say, that we're going to buy. Uh, the, a, a person, say, of 45 to 50, as would have been back in 2008, if they were 45, 50 today, will be traveling the world, be looking at have so many options if they did want a holiday home, etc., etc. So it's 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 a whole different ballgame. And the economic pressures on top of the lack of the price rises and trying to get younger people to buy holiday homes, they don't want they don't want to be tied down. So it, the, all these things have, have a bearing on the price. Okay, this isn't to uh, rejoice in your bad news. It's it's, it's, a, it's a reality check. Okay, and it sometimes a shock some of the values that come through, and the purchases aren't there. Location is all. You know, we hear there's the program and TV here. Location, location, location. We hear it all, right? If you've got a poor development, you've got a poor development. There are any number of articles. I was looking through uh, Euro Weekly and checking on Corvera Golf, and the number of promises that have been made uh, are phenomenal. That uh, we've got a new golf management team. We've got a new. None of them have happened. The clubhouse is shut. The place is a uh, uh, unfortunately like a nature reserve now. It's all grown over. And there's another assurance that somebody's coming in to do this and do this and do that. And, you know, there's so many false promises on there. So if you've got a bad location, you've got a bad location. And again, it's not judgmental. One mistake back in the day, you were missold undoubtedly. Don't go to the FCA. It be, and it's, you, you were unfortunate, you're a victim of circumstance. A lot of people beat themselves up about this. Why did it? It's happened. Move on. So get over the location. It The price will be the price. OK, and go, don't just rely on whatever's on, online. Oh, it could be 100 grand. And those, those prices don't exist. Those, you go to the estate agents, the pictures are faded. So location is all. If you've got a bad, bad result, it's a bad result. OK, so a bit harsh, but that's the way it is. Then you're looking at purchases coming in and lenders. Uh, they're, they're difficult enough. Spain, Spain was Spain's pretty tough to get mortgage. I have a very good friend. Uh, in, if anybody needs a mortgage, I'll, I'll come back to a man called Mark Elliott, right, uh, based in San Pedro there, and he uh, he can get mortgages, right. But it's tough, really tough. You know, it's tough in the UK now. The things we have to go through, not like the good old days. Sign this and leave the rest to me. Good old days in inverted commas. Okay, mortgages are very difficult to secure, and certain developers they won't lend on. They know the value is tough. Again, it's really, really difficult. And then the last point on here is, is for always the challenge for us is for people to uh, understand and really get what the value is about. And that's why I call it that unreasonable expectation of vendors. I was speaking to an estate agent based uh, in Estepona and they would set the beautiful shop window and everything else. And all oh, lovely prices, everything else. What, what's the basis of the prices on there? Some of those look a bit on the upside. And he said, a lot of people can go, right, the, the estate agent talk is that, yes, uh, what is a lovely place? What would you what, what do you think the value is? And people will always gravitate to whatever balance is outstanding. The estate, so if it's, it's 150,000, why? Because I owe 150,000 euro. Those properties don't sell. If you want to deal with this issue, there's a way through it. There is a cost. Uh, there's undoubtedly a cost to this, but it can be dealt with no matter how many arrears you've got uh, within reason, if you're in the middle of litigation, it can be done. It, we dealt with people, unfortunately, where their wife, partner, husband has died. We've seen those cases through as well, even if it's uh, in the middle of the process here. Um, but it's very important to, uh, and again, I've been a bit harsh, but get that reality check. It is what it is, okay? And, uh, you know, we'll help you through that, but... The, the, the market is going nowhere. To the extent, going back to that unit I referred to earlier, the gentleman that got 60,000 for his 250,000 purchase, the Spanish now are entering to the market for those properties because they're, I think they're actually selling down there now 89,000 euro. Suddenly it's affordable to the locals. You find that in Corvera Golf, a lot more locals in there. Um, and so we know how far it's come. They're not going to go anywhere with that market. You know, if you get 10% on 89, it's still only nearly 100,000 euros. So it just isn't going to come back. And it's it's tough, but it's a reality check. That market is going nowhere. In a minute, we're going to show you a true testimonial video, video here from uh, Debbie and Dave. And this is an example of a vulture fund bought a book, I think it was a Savadell mortgage, 
um, and he, they bought it, I think it was about 2008, and they'd had enough of it by 2012. And the, they went to the local solicitors, and he basically told them what they wanted to hear. So they handed back the keys, uh, and the solicitor advised them that they would not be pursued for the shortfall. You know, drive off into the sunset, get your single flight, and that's you, right? Definitely not the case. And these things always come out at the wrong time, okay? Debt never goes away. We we get some clients try to be clever about, oh, it's the statute of limitations and everything else like that. Debt doesn't go away. This 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 debt, this they, they owed 63,000 euro, right, after everything had been sold and sold at an auction and costs, etc. Debt doesn't go away. It's always got a value to somebody. You know, it, it, and in this case, uh, Exacta, uh, who, who we work with quite a bit, not with, against, um, and uh, they bought this debt. So out of the blue, about 10 years after they left the hand of the keys in, they got a letter, say, literally out of the blue, this is a real shock, and it always arrives on a Saturday, uh, a letter from Exacta demanding 63,000 euro be paid immediately. Now, Debbie and David got on with their life, changed house a couple of times, built up a good lump of equity, living their life sensibly, but there was this thing in the background, and they were relying on the advice from this solicitor, uh, a solicitor in Spain, by the way. Okay, and if solicitors are watching this, I'm very sorry. I, I'm not a fan of solicitors. They speak totally outside their brief, uh, and in Spain, in Spain, it's like the Wild West. Okay, they'll say whatever you want, two thousand euro, thank you, don't worry, off you go. Okay, whatever they people paid him for his time, but it's just not the case. The uh, some people. So on the on that basis, then some people go right cross jurisdictional. They can't chase me in the UK. Yes, they can. All right. Yeah, but what about Brexit? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If a country is in what's called the OECD, there are cross border facilities to chase any debt in the world. We deal in. I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, introduction to us as genuinely as a company, and we deal with cases literally worldwide. Uh, we, we've got one there. We're dealing with in Dubai. They, would, they can chase anywhere. So the solicitor, like I said, told them what they wanted to hear. Ten years later, they get this absolute shock. So they're looking there, they're 63,000, and we're worth a few quid now. We've done okay for ourselves. We've worked hard, paid off our, some of our mortgage, etc., as, as, we're, as we're all programmed to do. Okay? So they saw their, 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 their issue you know, really starkly. Now, what we did, we went into uh, negotiation with uh, Exacta straight away. And long story short, we, obviously I'm not going to relate the full secrets of how we do our work, but we settled on uh, £10,000, and that was on a full and final basis. So the overall savings were in the region of €50,000. I mixed up, the, mixed up the currency there, but you see what we did. So say it was €12,000. But the, 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 the clients were ecstatic because they literally, from the day they got that letter till we till we concluded the deal, they didn't believe in it. And I think I think it's Dave says in the video, uh, sorry, Dave in the video says that this was too good to be true. And that's the challenge we come across because you've been wronged as individuals along the way. Okay, you've had the dodgy mortgage broker, you had the dodgy developer, you had the dodgy bank. Okay, the dodgy solicitor. Everything was dodgy right around the time when most of this. Uh, negative equity came about. We get that, and that's why you just you can't just do that. That's why we have on YouTube any number of uh, testimonials. Uh, we have people, because they're so happy in terms of what we've done, they will give genuine telephone testimonials and say this is what they did. It's, it's not a usual testimonials. Mr. B of Banbury said. These are genuine people that went through the mill, and uh, thank you, Debbie and Dave, for putting this forward. And it didn't take too much asking either. They were very, very pleased to do it. We was panicking then. We thought, we're going to have to pay this full amount of this money and just get, get rid of it because it was causing a lot of worry. And then a friend of ours uh, said, have you had a look online and they recommended you? They haven't used you, I don't think, but they recommended you. They said, well... No, she just tapped in Spanish debt, UK okay. box. So she just, sent, she just sent me the link. So I went on and read through that. I must admit that was a problem for us, the trust thing, because you'd think uh, we'd have all these problems in Spain. Our, our, the lawyer that dealt with us, who's a Spanish lawyer who speaks English, who's from Liverpool, he led us down big town. 
we sent the letter through to him and never got back to us. We rang his office, rang his Spanish office, rang his mobile, and he never returned any of our calls. So our trust was on a real low with yeah. anything to do with Spain, property, anything. Um, it's just when we, we had the, the, the Zoom call with, it was the first person Liam, we spoke to, was it Liam, first Liam. of all? And Liam said that, you know, we, we've dealt with this kind of recovery thing before. Mm-hmm. Um, we've dealt with Axetor before. And that kind of put a, a tease a little bit. Obviously, I've had a look, I had a look at you on the website as well. Uh, a, little, a look at uh, what you do and that and some of the comments. And then uh, we then got through to somebody else. Somebody else was the next one. Who, no, it was Natalie. Natalie. Next. Um, and all the way through, it seemed professional. You told us straight away how much it was going to cost us. Uh, the only thing we did doubt and we worried about was you said that um, how much you could reduce the debt by. And I must admit, we thought, we can't, see, to be true. can't see that happening. <laughs> can't see you doing that. And then, but then we asked that question and that was told that, you know, that they buy these in bulk, these debt people off yeah, the banks, yeah. and they buy them for, I think he said 10 pence in the pound, something that I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was quite cheap. He said, so there is a deal to be done and we can do that deal. And we have done it before. And you just have to put your confidence in us and uh, we will get you a reduced fee. Yeah. And, and he mentioned that, he did say it would be... Um, between 10 and 20%. Between, yeah, 10 and 20%. Mm. But obviously, the lower that you can get it, the more that you make, because you take a percentage of, of what we say, don't you? Mm-hmm. So it's in your interest. That was one of the things we thought, well, that's good, because it's in your interest to try and get it as low as you can, because yeah. then you make more money, don't you, mm-hmm. off what we say. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, going back to your original question, yeah, we did have a lot of worries and concerns. And like you said, the trust thing's a big thing. And if you're already in debt with somebody who's coming after you, to trust to pay somebody else to try and get rid of that debt for you or reduce that debt for you is a big trust thing, isn't it? Mm. So yeah, we did have a few issues with that, I must admit. And we've never been in this situation before anyway. We we just tried to get hold of our initial solicitor for mm. two weeks and he just was not getting back to us. So we were just like like Dave said, we were already like, what we're gonna do. Yeah. But uh... somebody would talk to us for a start and get them give feedback to us when we, when we rang them or emailed them and that Natalie kept us updated all the time which was a big plus because you worry thinking okay. this is too good to be true are we really going to get it reduced is it going to get sorted and she kept getting back to us and every time we rang her with a query she always got straight back to us the next day not that day the next day yeah. which is when you're worried about something as much as we've worried about this because it's a debt isn't it and you're worried that they're going to come and have a go at your house have a go at your assets over here and for once somebody got back to us and replied to us and yeah. that was a big plus and I think there's not many people do that anymore. Yeah. They promise it, but they don't do it. I uh, said prior to that video that um, I wanted to give you a little bit of a taster about what we're about so you understand a bit more. Because we, we know you in, in these instances when you've got this thing and you've been wronged, everybody has massive trust issues. OK, so very, very briefly about us. This isn't this isn't a 20 minute editorial. So we got started in this by mistake. OK. We work extensively in the UK. In fact, 90% of our business now comes from uh, 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 England, Wales, and Scotland. And uh, we've always, I've always dealt in debt. Okay, From the crazy times of 2005 through 2007, when uh, anyone could get a mortgage, uh, there was massive sort of uh, massive heat in the market. Everything went crazy. You know all that, right? Okay, so then it went wrong. I came and worked here, and what we were finding is we find people had because there was so much money around, you could do what you wanted, right? Uh, you bought your house, crazy price, massive mortgage. You you borrowed a lot of money for your business, and you still have money over to either buy a place, holiday home, say here in Ireland, or abroad. And we were working through people's situations. You still got a place in Spain? Oh dear, a place in Cyprus? And we worked through that. Thought, okay, there's a market there. So that's how we got got into it. This is not not too scientific, okay? What we do is we deal with any debt issue, no matter what form it takes. We have a sister company here called Bell and Company, and I'll, I'll get the guys to put the details on the uh, the back, back sheet here when I give you our contact details. So you can just see what we're about. And as a group, at any one point, we typically we've got about 250 clients that we act for. So I'd like to think we're doing something right. Um, and we have a team here in total of 22. We're not going to get any bigger because I want to keep the quality of what we do. And we are straight, straight to the point. Some people don't like it. So some people may have been a bit offended earlier in terms of saying, right, if you've bought something that's not great, you may think that's a bit rude. With respect, I apologize, but I don't care because it's important that people are realistic about their issues. 
we deal in debt, it's almost like being a financial uh, undertaker. We always only ever act solely for the client. We've been approached by a couple of institutions, as indeed as our solicitor in Spain, to uh, come and join them. Uh, and we, we just turn that down flat. Our, our focus is completely on the client. We're, our job is to understand the banks and their parameters and protocols, like I said earlier, but that's where it stops. We don't go for a drink with them. We don't go for a meal with them because we don't want it to in any way fog what we're doing at the moment. So it's very important we do that. Only ever act for the client. We understand how they work. We understand how solicitors work. Solicitors are typically very rude to us, but we don't care. Again, we're not going for a beer with them. So what we've got to do here, we, we make sure in wherever we are, be it in the UK, be it in Spain, be it Cyprus, anywhere, Bulgaria, we get the best legal representation. Now that is included in a fixed fee for the work that we do. It isn't, we've got your deal, here's a big solicitor's bill to go with it. From the beginning, and I'll explain later, we're transparent in what we do. So, but you have to have the best relevant legal representation. If you walk down the high street with that letter from Exactor and walk into a solicitor who's very good at divorces, they would go, yes, we can deal with that, right? They can't. So it's very important to get the, the and I'm not a lover of solicitors. I've gone through a lot of solicitors here. Uh, as I often say, we've kissed a lot of frogs and e even our own ones, we, we, we make sure they're up to the job at all times. So you've got to have that there. And the, the, the video here uh, is, is sort of hopefully demonstrating that we're genuine in what we do. Um, my mantra has always been, do the best for the client, we get the benefits from there. And that's a genuine thing. I do it to the team all the time. If somebody tries to sell something, don't sell. Solution, cost, you decide client. Sometimes you have to talk it through a bit more than that, but that's our mantra. So we've got these genuine testimonies, and just please do go through the YouTube channel there and it'll give you more and more about us. Increasingly, we're finding people contact us about interest-only mortgages. Uh, on the right, there's a video to follow this in terms of where I give a bit more of an update. I think it's one of the things off our YouTube channels. And it was at a time when uh, I was in our Leeds office and uh, I could afford a razor then. So interest-only mortgages, again, it was a massive mis-selling scandal. You cannot beat foreign banks and in foreign courts to try and make sure that, that sticks. We've any number of clients who are trying it in Cyprus where they were sold a horrible product and it was a Swiss franc mortgage and it's just just shocking. Um, and I say missold quite openly. The the FCA don't like us saying that. But you you work right the way through it. You've been missold. You were grossly you bought grossly over. Uh, price properties and but it was made easier all of this by interest only mortgages and the commissions on them for the for the salesman at the time and they were salesmen they were, they were advisors but you get advisors now very good ones you, and you get ifas etc but back then and any any dodgy character could sell a mortgage okay easy uh, and it was all it was a, almost bordering on a cartel the bank the developer the solicitor, the, the lender, and it was, you know, it, was, it was just, it was a nightmare. But to, to get it through, very often they use the tactics and right, here you go, right, it's a very, very low repayment. You're getting your 150,000 euro unit and it's going to cost you 400 euros a month because it's interest only. It goes to, re in, in the small print, it goes to interest only in 10, 12, 15 years, okay, which is a massive flip. But don't worry about it because also they used to throw around guarantee deals. We can guarantee that you'll get 26 weeks of lettings out of this, whatever it might be. The guaranteed yields were typically given by the builder who in the main isn't here. So if you go back to the developers of Corvera there, they're not here. Okay. Um, uh, I always gone about Corvera because I don't know, just always annoys me when I go to that resort, how bad it is. So you've got that, you've got that flip, you've got the low payment don't worry about everything else everything's called 10 years 15 that's miles away yet you're all you're all everything's great okay plus we'll guarantee you this yield right never happened so as i say there it was missold by uh today's standards now as 
a group, and it, we, we haven't got a uh, really accurate figure, but it, we, we, that's why we call it a demographic and age section, right? We've, we've, all, we've all matured in every sense. Our finances are matured, but it's still almost like I always refer to some of these properties like the, the mad aunt in the loft, right? Oh, cheapers, we're going to have to go and look at it, go and see it, right? And we, we carry this right the way through. We are, we are starting approaching, so I'm 63 years, so we were 63 years old, so you know time's not your friend, right? This has to be sorted. Uh, we've had instances where... Um, a lady, for instance, died and her family didn't know she had a negative equity property and it had to be dealt very painfully, uh, you know, after her death in terms of her estate. We managed to sort it out, but, you know, and it's, it's one of those things, you've got the backdrop of the market never coming back. You've got, uh, not, not, not in a negative, you've got all, all, the, all the turmoil, if you like, in the world. And the properties, the, the younger people aren't buying these properties. Uh, and for us, time time marches on. So it's very important to, if you're in this stage here, uh, and this is what we're finding on interest only mortgages, people are 70, I think we had instances of people being 80 and the mortgage multiplying five times, record was, I think it was about nine times from the monthly repayment, sorry, the monthly interest only to repayment, it was a ninefold increase. And it's really, and there's no talking to the banks, no talking to the banks. You signed that mortgage deed, you said you were going to do it, They've endured, if you like, the really low return on what they've got there. Now it's their chance to get the capital, and they may look at it for a little while. But you've still got that you've still got that zombie situation where it's, it's still in negative equity, and they want more money, and you've got the bills. And if it's if it's a poor development, then it's it's going to be pretty tough to uh, keep the maintenance up on it as well. So I'm trying not to be negative. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a reality check, if you like. If you've if you've got to if you've got to take, bite the bullet here, you've got to bite the bullet now. So, as I said before, we, we've, we've got quite a few of these cases on board. So, this is a case study uh, of an interest-only mortgage that we settled for a client. And the trigger was the repayment. And also, uh, my uh, our office manager in Leeds there, Natalie, is gonna, uh, who's going to talk through a case that she, she dealt with. She deals with most of the cases, Natalie. With, with Jim and everything else, um, and the, the, but there's a separate one I want to talk you through because it gives you a little bit more insight. So there's an interest only period uh, coming up, and this ge elderly gentleman, I think it was the 70 year old one I referred to earlier, suddenly came up against a situation where his interest only payments were going to go from 300 euros a month to 2,000 euros a month. Simply could not be done. It was, it was a drain on him as it was. He wasn't in love with the property. He said he fell for it at the time. Uh, he, I think his wife had passed. And now he was just stuck with this situation where he had a pretty big mortgage on here versus um, you know, something that was about worth about half the value. So he didn't know what to do again. He, he, his financials, as a financial, sorry, uh, as I said earlier, matured. He'd retired, drawn down his pension, doing thing, whatever, living life, but his property that he had here, uh, which had about a couple of hundred grand of negative equity. So there's nothing he could do. Long story short, we went to the bank and said, right, this is the situation. This man cannot afford this. Protect him and mindful of his UK assets. That's the backdrop we always have to work. Again, that financial maturity, we're all, we all do it. We, we work as hard as we can, get through, get through life so we can slow down a bit, have a couple of quid around us. And if the children are nice, we'll leave them some money. Now, so he faced the, uh, that zombie situation, 2,000 a month, which he couldn't afford, versus 200,000, it's about 200,000 short for here. So uh, we, we went into bat with a solicitor. Um, he was uh, pretty aggressive with them. Uh, there's a bit of to and fro in. Um, we said, if you want to repossess it, repossess it. That's not flippant comment, it's part of the tactics in terms of what we adopt here. Uh, no, you have to do this, you have to do it. No, no. Anyway, long story short. We arranged for the sale of the property and the client's total cost to resolve is about 210,000 euro after cost. To sort out that shortfall of 210,000 euro was 20,000 euro including fees. And it genuinely warms the cockles of my heart when we do those sort of deals because this guy was just, and, and most people are good, honest people who've made one mistake and it was sort of torturing him. Uh, and we, we very often, we often get quite emotional clients when we get through this. Again, you come from the backdrop, we don't believe you can do it, and you do it. That's why I would like if you do it just after this this, this webinar, 
go and see some of these testimonies because they're genuine because you see some of the production especially by the clients is pretty poor but we thank them for it and we just hope you see them for what they are here's how we saved mike over three hundred and seventy thousand euros today we have a story about mike one of our clients who reached out to us with his Spanish property nightmare. Mike purchased several properties in the early 2000s, but it was one in particular that he was struggling with. He'd contacted various estate agents for advice on his situation. However, it was only until one estate agent contacted him with our details that he finally reached out. Mike had an outstanding mortgage balance of 390,000 euros, and it was interest only. The interest only period was coming to an end in 18 months time. What this meant was his payments that were 300 euros a month were going to increase to 2,000 euros a month and this was unsustainable for him. On top of that, the property was only worth 200,000 euros, so it was in severe negative equity. After lengthy negotiations with this difficult Spanish lender, we managed to secure the voluntary surrender and complete debt write-off, including outstanding IBI fees of 3,000 euros into the settlement. Mike only paid just over 18,000 euros and we managed to achieve savings of over 370,000 euros. Mike's situation is not unique. We've seen many clients face similar challenges with their properties abroad. That's why it's important to be proactive and look for a professional team like ourselves to resolve the issue for you. If you find yourself facing a similar issue, please contact EU Property Solutions today. I'm going to start to draw this to a close and I just want to uh, explain why I've called this section you and us because I want you to start to understand I've been, been a bit harsh here and again I apologize if I offended, offended somebody if they love their resort and uh, trashed it didn't mean to do that by any stretch I'm just the reality check and the economics of the situation now what I want to go through here is saying this this is this is these are things that our clients say as well so I'm bringing it out it's almost like a, an FAQ if you like okay so we have to understand your issues and concerns right and because we have to this is a difficult time for you uh, we're, we're human beings we're empathetic we're very realistic and but we have to understand your issues and concerns and where you are because that helps us create our tactics on your specific case I keep going on about the demographic and <laughs> don't start sending me stuff you're very ageist okay I understand the correct demographic okay um, we understand our market and the people that got caught in the, the this basically traps you know the the, the the four the four corners there the banks the solicitors etc okay our first and final role is to protect you and your UK assets and we have ways of doing that uh, it's not easy. Uh, a lot of people sometimes come to us to explain how we can do it, what we can do for them, and go and try it themselves. It's a bit like a health and safety video. Don't try this at home because you get one go. Uh, we had one gentleman rang me once and said, I, you said you could do this and that. I rang the bank and they said they can't do it. And I said, that's exactly it. That's all we do. We charge you fees, right? Make one call and it's sorted. It's not. These are battles. Each and every case is a battle with the bank with the bespoke legal team, as I said. The, the reason I go on about the, and we use quite a few testimonial videos, testimonial videos, sorry, and testimonial calls are available. We understand your trust issues because you've been wronged in this instance. It's, it's, it's like, a, it takes the form of a mental scar. You know, I, I refer to it sort of laughingly as the mad aunt in the loft. That goes on, we get it, right? And we, we, we're, not, we're, not, we're not trying to break your reticence. We want you to free up and make help even if you don't use us, make the right decision. That's what I'm saying. Just, I'm a great believer, problem, go and sort it if you can, straight away. We always ensure in every case, the best outcome for you, okay? Uh, and by that, I mean, we know the parameters we can work in. We tell you the worst, we achieve the best. It's a mantra I use all the time. And we're pretty accurate in our predictions because of our knowledge, our, the, the sort of, the granular detail that we go into with the banks okay so we 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 we're, we're strong in terms of our projection what it's going to totally cost you to get out of a situation and most importantly we're 100 percent transparent with you that 100 percent thrown around a lot but 
we tell you everything. If the bank, if you want to know blow by blow what happened when you rang the bank, uh, they said get stuffed and they're not going to detain us, right? We don't do that in Maine because our job is to go away, do do it, sit in darkened rooms with banks, fall out of them, uh, create a case where we can we can get to a place where we can have the proper negotiation to get the settlement and get you out of what is a tricky situation. So transparency is all. Costs everything. Everything is transparent. No surprises. So the costs, when it comes to it, and they're explained in the case, they will include any legal costs that are required, um, and we tell you everything. Flip side of it is, we need you to be transparent to us, especially when you've got UK assets at risk. Because if a bank tells us something that you've hidden, it completely undermines the case. So it has to be a two-way street here in terms of the, the transparency. But uh, that's how we operate. A couple of questions we've got in recently, which I wanted to share with you, right? And I'll just go into a little bit of detail here. Um, some of them aren't necessarily relevant, but if people are watching in terms of the title of the webinar. But some people uh, are watching this. Then I'll, I'll come back here, uh, and I'll. And if you want to reach out, if you've got other questions outside, there's a hello email address here up on the screen that'll come up in a minute. So I've got a, a couple of questions, which I'll, I'll, I'll go through fairly quickly because they're g sort of generic. Do I need a solicitor if I'm looking to buy a property now? Now, I've sort of trashed solicitors through this process, yes, but you do need a solicitor, a solicitor if you're buying any foreign property, any property, but especially in a foreign climate. And um, yeah, if, if, if you need, need advice on that, we've two or three that we can use. Uh, and it's very important to get the right. But it, 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 it's a, Spain is bad, Cyprus is even worse. But we know we know people that can do the job properly, and um, we check them. If we if we uh, if we recommend somebody, we'll follow that case through, even though we're not going to get any financial reward for it. Uh, question two: It is ever too late to resolve any issue in Spanish mortgages? No, just don't leave it to the up. It gets more difficult the longer you leave it. So if you've had a situation like uh, Debbie and Dave there driving off into the sunset, obviously. They weren't aware of what was going on in the background because they sort of switched off because of that advice, that completely flawed advice. But even if we have instances, for instance, where banks secured charges on people's home in the UK, uh, and we I think there was, there was a, an instance where there were 38 cases for Sabadell, 20, and they had charges on the property. So if you've if you owe a hundred thousand shortfall and your house is worth 500,000 and you've got a 300,000 mortgage, they're sitting there waiting for the 100,000. We still did settlements with those banks and got those charges removed. Please don't leave it to that point though. Uh, and again, I'll go on to about the demographic. You don't want to leave these sorts of issues with uh, the next generation. I've been contacted by my lender. Should I go to my solicitor? Depends who your solicitor is and their knowledge. Again, your your solicitor that helped with the conveyance, uh, setting up your will and whatever, right, is not armed technically or tactically to deal with foreign debt uh, pursue. Um, the the vulture funds are very aggressive in their approach, and they can read a solicitor as to whether up to, if they're against them, they can work out if they're up to scratch, and. I think I said before, but I want to say it for the last time, not a fan of solicitors. If, you're, if your solicitor says he can do it, he or she can do it, make sure they give you evidence that they've dealt with such a situation. <laughs> Next one's quite simple. Can I sue my bank for a missold mortgage? mortgage? You can if you just want to give away a lot of money. You will very rarely do, uh, do any of these cases. I haven't seen one in Spain where it's been overturned. There's no need for them to do. The money's owed, the cross-jurisdictional chasing powers are there, and that's what will happen. So a lot of people get wrapped up in this. A lot of people very much so in Cyprus, okay? It goes nowhere. The courts just, the banks just stall it. The courts are useless. Four years to repossess a house in Spain at the moment, it's nuts. But you, you, you'll be throwing good money after that, and it's a complete waste of energy. You're not going to win. But if you want to do that, we, we using the uh, Spanish example, we say that people that do this are Don Quixotes, the guys that used to fight the windmills, you know, the, the guy on a horse that used to fight the windmills. Wrong fight. <laughs> it's, it's mad. 
it's not going to happen. But if that's what floats your boat, good luck. Final question in this section. I have a threatening letter from a lender debt purchaser. So what should I do? Obviously, I'd say contact us. One bit of advice that I must always give everybody, right? So it, because the natural, the letter is written to make sure you react or try to get you to react, okay? And very often people uh, mess the situation up by going straight back to them and saying, right, this 100,000, right? Uh, I can't pay it. Uh, and immediately admit to the debt, okay? There's ways of doing things. If you're going to contact them directly, you need to do it on a without prejudice basis, okay? Which means it can't be used later in court. But, and I would say this anyway, doesn't matter who it is, get third third party representation. If, a, if you find a solicitor who is in this field and knows what they're doing, perfect. If you want us to do it, even better. Uh, but just be very careful. Flip side of it is don't ignore it because uh, in the mindset of the lender or the debt purchaser, they're thinking you've got something to hide, okay? And they will come at you stronger and stronger. Suddenly, costs will start to accumulate, and then you've got a whole different scenario. Again, it's that sort of thing of taking action, but taking the right action. It's making sure you're versed with as many facts as you can, plus getting the best representation, including whatever representation you may need in Spain. Any other questions you have, and genuinely on a free basis on the, on the back of this webinar, if you send us an email, and the, the guys will put it up in the last slide in a minute, it's hello at eupropertysolutions.com. Anything you want to ask, okay, and we'll come back to you. And uh, uh, and I say, the, if, you, if you become a client, brilliant, right? On that basis, even if you've got a boundary issue or something like that, we'll ask our team in Spain to say, right, what, what, what do they need to do here? And they'll they'll hold your hand or we'll find somebody else, whatever you want to do, right? But genuinely, any any questions you want to ask on that basis, just give us a shout because we, we know where to go with the questions if we can't answer it directly. So that's us. Sorry for wasting some of your bank holiday. Wherever you are, undoubtedly, we will be getting here. We're okay, but undoubtedly, you might be getting some bank holiday weather, usual pouring down with rain at the end of August. Uh, that's that's our details. There's our website there, uh, the email address I just gave you, and you can contact us. Any, anything else there? There's a telephone number as well. So if, if you need, if, if anything's concerning, you just lift the phone, right? We, we, we don't sell. We tell you what the solution is. If you want us to look at it, what cost it, you decide. That, that's the simple process. And it works with us across the board, 250 clients across the board in terms of what we do here. And we, we, we take any we take on any fight and make sure we achieve the best for you. So again, thanks for your time and speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye.